Hello class, so here is how I would approach teaching about like the miracles of Jesus at a high school world history course. So again, we're going through this from historical perspective, not from the specific perspective of a believer. And so that puts the miracles of Jesus in kind of on a place because uh, they are very important to this story and all these different impacts with them, but typically is, is not something how you would recount historically. So usually put the miracles of Jesus as described in the Gospels in four different categories. Control over nature, healing, exorcisms, and resurrection of the dead. So when it comes to control over nature, these are some of the most famous miracles. Okay, so like a chemical change, right? Turning water into wine okay, at a wedding. The calming of the storm. Story of Jesus being asleep in the boat. There's a storm going on. Disciples wake Jesus up in a panic. He goes and he calms them, right? So he has authority even over the weather of so. Walking on water is something that is attributed to Jesus before and after his death and resurrection. Um, and um, Jesus walking on water, and then the multitudes of bread and fish. Okay, so like the feeding of the 5,000 story, one of the few things found in all four Gospels, okay, where five loaves of bread, two fish. Okay, is multiplied in a way that at least 5,000 people can eat it. So he has control over nature in a way that people typically don't have. Then there are miracles that are related to healing. And Jesus healed a wide variety of different maladies. He heals, makes a blind man be able to see. He heals several different people with leprosy. He heals someone that has paralysis. As tells him to go out to walk. Man with a withered hand. He heals deafness. He even heals the woman that had been continuously bleeding. Okay, so the ability of Jesus to heal was well known as you see within the gospels people seek him out for this specifically now this is interesting third category of exorcisms and that has to do with like the popular imagination today in the last 50 years of like the movie the exorcist like the conjuring series where exorcisms are very over the top type events and on the base level, exorcism is the casting out of a demon. And if you take the gospel events, face value, Jesus is encountering demons quite regularly that are occupying creatures, mostly humans. And that Jesus has authority over them and can force them to leave. Now, we do have to consider the first century beliefs about demons. And sometimes you still hear this type of terminology of someone that is fighting their own demons with has to do with, say, addiction or mental health. Okay? And so there are things that today we may ascribe to being people with severe mental health issues that people in the first century would have attributed to the literal possession of demons. Uh, but if you take the gospel of face value, Jesus is casting out demons. And then the last category for Jesus' miracles is resurrection of the dead. Bringing people that were dead back to life. If you put the gospels all together, the stories, he resurrects the young girl, he resurrects the young man, he resurrects his friend Lazarus, who had been dead for several days, and then the most important event, 
for Christians, his own resurrection from the dead on the third day. And, you know, the prophets of the Old Testament had many of these abilities through the help of, of God there. So, and there are parallels that the audience at the time would have seen between what miracles Jesus did and the miracles that were described in the Old Testament.